Hi Libra, welcome to April. This is Teresa from Tower by T. Before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So this month we have a full moon in your sign. And that's on April 7th. And then we have a new moon in Taurus on the 22nd. So this is going to be a, a tense month. We've got some tense aspects happening astrologically. And then Pluto goes retrograde at the end of the month. So we'll see how that affects your sign as well. But let's see what happens, um, what's going on in terms of love and relationship. What is happening for Libra? What does Libra need to know about love and relationships in April? What does Libra need to know about love and relationships in April? What does Libra need to know about love and relationships in April? The Magician, the Hierophant, the Four of Wands, the Nine of Swords, the Six of Wands, the Seven of Cups, typical, the Six of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the King of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles. Hmm. Okay. So the Magician and the Hierophant. This is a card of manifestation. You can manifest whatever you want. You just have to believe that it's possible. You have all the skills you need for success. You, he's got all the tools here. He's channeling divine energy. So if you want a good relationship or if you want changes in your life, you can make it happen. What's crossing you is the Hierophant. You're worried too much about what other people think. And this is a card of being stubborn, conservative. Sometimes it can mean that you're dealing with a Taurus because the Hierophant is the Taurus symbol. but uh, Or someone who's stubborn. But it could also be you. Um, sticking to tradition. This is about tradition. Um, you could be working in a company that is either healthcare, government, education, something that's been around, that's been established for a long time. It's, it has a conservative attitude about it. So you have conservative beliefs. Maybe you were raised in a family that was conservative. So it's like that's at ah, it's it's a help in one way because it brings you stability and wisdom, but it can also keep you stuck because you're afraid to break out of the teachings of this um, this way of thinking. Maybe you're being too conservative or too stubborn on an issue. In the past, you have the Four of Wands. This is a card of marriage and security and victory. Um, so you've been, you know what relationships are about. You know what good relationships are. You know what you want. You want stability in a relationship. You want security. But you've been stressed mentally. You have the Nine of Swords here. Maybe you're worried about someone's health. Or you're worried about a loved one. And that's been affecting your life. But this is passing. This is an influence that's passing. So whatever was stressing you, whatever was worrying you, it's kind of fading. And you have the victory card here, the six of wands. That's a card of victory. You have two sixes. Sixes represent harmony. And you have three sevens. Sevens represent transition. So you are transitioning 
from one state of being into another. But you have confusion. You have the Seven of Cups. So there's, you may have more than one choice in a relationship in April. And you're not sure which what you want. So you're not deciding. This is like being stuck in the choices. Um, the higher friend could also mean that you want something. You know, you want a, you want a traditional relationship. You don't want a fly by night thing. Um, and you can have that. You can have stability. You can have security. You can have marriage. But you have to make up your mind, Libra. Because the Seven of Cups is being stuck in the choices and not being able to choose. And that's what's blocking you. I mean, on some level, you have the Six of Swords here. You can move away from difficulty into a, towards greater harmony. Um, but this is in your negative thinking sector, so you're doubting it. You're doubting yourself. It's like you want, you're stuck in your, you want to stay stuck in your worry and stuck in your misery. You don't want to move forward. Or you doubt that it's possible. And that doubt is what's blocking you. Even here with the Seven of Pentacles, you have, you know, you planted seeds. You're wondering, is anything going to grow? Is anything going to happen? Well, things can happen, but you have to take charge. You have to be the leader, the King of Wands. Um, this could be... I feel like the king of, you could be dealing with someone who is like a fire sign, the king of wands. And this king of wands energy, there's something shady about this person. They're not being honest with you. The seven of swords is the thief card. or the, It's deception. It's sneaky. It's covert. This person's not telling you the truth. So there could be someone in your life that is not telling you the truth. That's saying one thing to your face, doing something else behind your back, or talking behind your back, or stealing from you in some way. Um, stay taking credit for the work that you do, or just being two-faced, or being a user. Um, there's that energy with the Seven of Swords. There's also the energy of, I can't, I have to hide this. I have to keep this hidden. I can't, I can't, I have to sneak. So I don't know if that means for some of you there's a relationship that you want to be involved in, but you're afraid what people will think, so you don't, uh, you want to keep it quiet. I don't know. It's weird. It's like there's this hidden energy around this, what you're wanting. You feel like you can't reveal what you want. You have to be a phony about it or something. I don't know. But uh, the other meaning of the King of Wands in this position, it's in your wishes and hopes. So if you want something... You have to be like the King of Wands. He's a leader. He goes what he wants. A King of Wands and, and all these, you know, the fire signs, when they want something, they go for it. They don't procrastinate. Libra has a tendency to procrastinate. Libra has a tendency to like, well, I don't know. Do I want this? This, you know, or do I want that? And so then you're stuck on the fence and you don't get anything because you never make a decision. And not making a decision is deciding too. So the King of Wands energy is like, I know what I want. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to say what I feel. That's the energy of the King. He's the leader. Um, so you have to take action. Don't worry about it. And if there's someone in your life that, I don't know, you feel like you're, you're feeling guilty about something, this card can re mean guilt also. You feel guilty. Or you may feel like you're taking something from someone. I don't know. I'm getting that energy too. But I think it's all in your head. I don't think it, the worries are not as severe as you're thinking. And you can move forward. You just have to communicate. Not be afraid to communicate and resolve whatever issues. Because this card is about moving away from difficulty Moving toward greater harmony, moving to a to a better situation, um, but it's through communication. So you might be afraid to have that conversation. Maybe you're afraid to speak up. But you are in transition, and you have the potential is here for victory, and you can manifest. You have the you have the ability to communicate. You just have to do it. Maybe you're dealing with someone who's very, who has a lot of pride, who's stubborn. 
Um, and so you have to be the one to initiate. But it's there for you. So at some point, you're going to have to make a decision and choose, or you might lose all your choices. Because if you wait, you know, if you wait too long, what do they say? Um, how does the early bird catches the worm or something like that? Or he who hesitates is lost. Or you snooze, you lose. That's it. That's what I was looking for. You snooze, you lose. You know, sometimes, you know, you want to buy something and you put it off and then all of a sudden it's sold out. And you can't get it anymore. Everybody else took it. So don't let that happen to you, Libra. Don't let your dream get sold out. Go for what you want. So let's see. What's happening with Libra at this full moon? So you have the moon in your first house, the sun in your seventh house. Something is coming to completion or culmination in a relationship. And the full moon brings certain things to light. So you're, you're realizing that you're at the end of a cycle. So for some of you, it might be a good thing. It might be you're making a commitment. Um, you're forming a solid partnership. For others, it could be the end of a relationship when you suddenly see the truth about something or someone. Whatever it is, you're going to see the truth at this full moon and you're going to realize certain things. Um, something has to be resolved in a relationship at this full moon. Now, the moon is squaring Jupiter and Pluto in your fourth house. So there have been tensions around family issues and your home. Maybe things are really changing in your home. Pluto going through the fourth house is very, it's a difficult energy um, because it can bring up childhood issues with your parents and your early childhood that you have to deal with. And maybe that's what's been blocking you. Maybe that's part, maybe some issues that come, that originate in childhood are interfering in your relationship. Now, Jupiter in the fourth is a good a good influence. If you're looking to buy a house, Jupiter will help you find the great, the perfect house. Jupiter brings abundance and expansion. But Jupiter can also make you feel like a square peg in a round hole. Like you may feel that your home doesn't fit you anymore or wherever you're living, you feel like an alien. <laughs> you feel like um, you don't belong with Jupiter in the fourth house. So that might be something that you're thinking about that's affecting your relationship. Maybe you're feeling like you're not fitting in somewhere. Mars is in the fifth with Saturn. So you could be having heavy responsibility around children. Children could be a burden for you right now. Or you may be working so hard you don't have time for fun. Maybe you're overworking. And there's no time for love, no time for romance. If you do find love or romance, it would be from someone at a distance because you have Venus in the ninth house. So you could be connecting with someone who either lives at a distance or is someone of a different culture than you, someone with a different belief system than you, someone very different who is raised in a different environment. And you have to expand your awareness to incorporate that person into your, you know, because it's, it's out of the norm. It's, it's not someone that's traditional. It's unconventional. Mars is squaring Uranus. Mars in the fifth, squaring Uranus in the eighth. So if you're fighting with your kids, it's over money. Um, maybe they want you, they're expecting too much financial support from you. Um, it could also be a relationship that comes up because the Mars in the fifth house is desire. Mars, fifth house is sex. Mars is about, you know, you might be attracted to someone suddenly. It could just develop out of nowhere, and that causes problems. It's explosive. It's sudden. And the eighth house is about intimacy. So Uranus, this relationship, if, you, if you're meeting someone new, uh, or you're connecting with someone, because it's in the fifth house, it's like a romance. It's not really, you know, a committed relationship. So it would be for people who are probably single unless you're married and it's a temptation. I don't know. But the feelings are very strong and um, very, they could come up suddenly. And suddenly you have this desire for someone. Um, and it could be someone very different 
than your normal type. But um, there's conflict because of all your responsibilities at home. And you're, you're, because you're working too hard and you don't have time. You have to make time for love. The new moon is in your eighth house. And it's conjunct Uranus. So there could be some surprising developments around your partner's income if you're married. Your own uh, resources. So this has to do with inheritance or insurance payout. You might be getting some type of financial support. Maybe even around taxes. Um, there could be some surprises. Maybe, uh, and, and it's, this new moon is squaring Saturn in your fifth house. So it could be that maybe one of your kids needs support uh, and you have to pay out something that has to do with your children. Some unexpected expense comes up. Mercury is in the seventh house and it's sextile Venus. So you could be communicating with someone from a distance. And that part's good. So it's like this: these moons, there's a lot of tension around the full moon and the new moon. But at the same time, Mars is trining Venus, Mercury is sextile Venus. So there is love through the difficulty, through the chaos. You could still connect with someone. But with Mercury, sextile Venus, you're going to have to take action to make it happen. Because a sextile is a positive energy, but it's not a given. You have to do something. To, to benefit. It's like opportunity is there, but you have to do something. With a trine, opportunity just falls in your lap. You know, you don't have to do anything. It's just like karmic reward. It just, you open the door and here's your, like, publisher's clearinghouse with the check, you know. <laughs> but with, with a sextile, you have to take action. So if you want to connect with someone, you know, you're going to, and have a relationship, you could have a good communication with this person, because Mercury in the seventh, I mean, you guys would spend a lot of time talking. And Mars is trining Venus at this time in your fifth, from your fifth house. So you could be connecting with someone that's very different from you and that lives at a dis either either lives at a different distance or is culturally different, you know, has a different background. Um, Neptune's in the sixth house. So if you're feeling a little bit under the weather. There could be some kind of hidden illness that you're like, that's hard to diagnose. Or you could be, sometimes Neptune in the sixth, you could be working in the healing professions and you're spending a lot of time working, serve, you know, serving and helping others. You just want to make sure you're not overdoing it at the expense of your own health. Um, the North Node is in Cancer and the Tenth House. And that's at zero degrees. So there could be some new developments in your career as well, or even in your status. I just feel um, you might decide to take a different direction in your career. Mercury in the seventh can bring someone mercurial into your life. You know, maybe someone under the sign of Virgo or Gemini. Venus in the ninth could be Taurus or Libra. So you could have more than one option that you can connect with. So you have to decide, Libra, who do you want to connect with this month? Because the opportunity is going to be there, especially at the new moon in Taurus with Uranus. Um, there could be some surprising developments or surprising opportunities. So don't blow it because you're too busy working. You know, give yourself some time to have fun. So that's my forecast for April Libra. I hope this resonated with you. I hope this has helped you. hope you're enjoying the readings. If you like the reading, please click on the um, like button, subscribe button, subscribe to my channel. If you'd like a private reading, click on the link in the description box. It will take you to my website, and we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, I thank you for supporting the channel, for commenting, and I wish everyone um, to be safe while we're quarantined, safe and healthy. And um, don't be afraid to reach out, take care of your immune system, connect through Zoom or online, some kind of social media thing. 
You don't have to be alone throughout this thing. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.